Right, let's get into the meat of this week's podcast. Later on, we'll be turning our attention to Hull's Grant McCann. Uh, Hull going great guns in League One and challenging for promotion back to the Championship. But the Championship is where we're going to start, and we're going to start in West London with Mark Warburton at QPR. QPR defeated yesterday by a single goal to Huddersfield. But actually, if you go back and look at the 2021 table, so all results since the start of the year, QPR have uh, conceded the second fewest goals, only Norwich have conceded more during that time. And Mike, until that point, Warburton was under a bit of pressure, wasn't he, at QPR? But he's he's been quite clever. He's been quite savvy in, in how he's managed to turn things around. Yeah, I've been very impressed with him this season on the whole. Um, I think mainly because he laid out his strategy for the season right at the outset that it was going to be about managing resources. And for a club of QPR's level that's kind of bottom eight, you know, just wants to keep the relegation pitcher at arm's length first and foremost because of the budget work they're working to and, you know, the, the, the issues they've got to deal with behind the scenes. Uh, and he laid out his strategy right from the beginning. We keep everybody fit. We, get, we don't give away silly suspensions. You know, we don't pick up silly cards. As long as we rotate cleverly and we use our resources well, the, the congested nature of the season and the heavy schedules that come, th- all the fixtures that come thick and fast, we want to put ourselves in a position so that when we get to the back end of these marathon runs, uh, you know, where it's Saturday, Tuesday, incessantly for five, six weeks at a time, when we get to the back end of them runs, we're in a position to strike with more energy than opposition, you know, and, and just generally in a better place, more, you know, more availability of players from the bench and turn games and be able to approach games in different ways and always have a bit of a vibrancy about us that perhaps other teams can't match. And I think that's played out, you know, before the defeats Oldersfield this weekend, eight wins out of 12 matches. That is incredible run of form for a club of QPR stature in the championship right now at this moment. And Warburton kind of spelt it out from the beginning of how he was going to go about it. And that's, that's how it's played out. And they were winning games that they weren't expected to as well. It's all very well and good beating the sides around around you, but they picked up some notable wins during that run. So clearly he's, uh, he's very much the logistics man, Mark Warburton. And is that, is part of that borne out the fact that he doesn't have a football background, particularly obviously is his, I guess his path to where he is now is is quite unique, isn't it, compared to many of the other managers at this level? Uh, well, yeah, I think he's understanding. I think it's just innate in his personality, but his understanding of resources also goes hand in hand with his previous job as a city trader. I think, you know, he, he has clearly got the skill set for that, for managing, you know, uh, understanding the value of resources uh, and being able to kind of forecast and see ahead and know what's going to be valuable in the future and things like that. This is kind of exactly what he's done at Loftus Road this season. He, 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 know, he, you know, he probably sees his own players almost like commodities that you know, he, he, he trades minutes with of how, how, often they, how long they spend on the pitch, which games that which players are most likely to be most valuable and when they're probably best given a rest. All of these kind of dynamics are, are something that he's got an eye on all the time. And he's always thinking several steps ahead. It's not just about this game and the next game. You know, he's always kind of just managing the energy levels of his players and that side of things, yeah. Yeah, and they can be quite inconsistent as well, can't they, QPR? But it does seem that every time Warburton really needs a win, as soon as the pressure is ramped up, they always seem to find it, don't they? They always seem to dig a little bit deeper. Is that down to the managing of resources that that you speak about? Um, Well, I think one... You know, one of the things that Warburton gets possibly more than most managers is randomness. You know, that inconsistency you talk about is essentially randomness. I think if you QPR, you're not going to win every single week. You're not going to get some real sort of, you know, massive consistency going um, because more often than not, two thirds of the division, you know, you come up against teams that are stronger than you. So by definition, you're, and especially when you've got quick turnarounds, you know, you are going to, or you should be losing more games than you win. Um, but he understands the nature of randomness. So I think there's a level-headedness to him when things aren't necessarily going the way. That, you know, being able to recover from defeats is just as, you know, is the flip side of a team that wins but can't seem to get on a run of wins earlier in the season. But that level-headedness is what gets you to January, mid-January onwards. And then suddenly you can win eight out of 12 because... You've not got too emotional about your, your inconsistency prior to that. And you've not, you know, you've not let get things, things get on top of you. 
you've always kept a level head. You always know what it is you're managing, you know, uh, and and basically the that things are keeping everyone feeling comfortable that things aren't getting out of control. Don't worry, this is all perfectly normal. This is just randomness. Let's keep stick to the signal and ignore all the noise. And that's kind of that's kind of what the way that Warburton has managed it all season. And the deeper and deeper we've got into the season, the more games are being played on his terms rather than the opposition terms, even though more often than not, the opposition have got more resources or stronger, you know, more strength in depth or better quality players to work with. What's he like then with development and with sort of learning? And I'm talking more for himself as opposed to the actual players. We'll talk about more on that, that in a bit, but because... He was, um, you know, at the start, certainly during his reign at QPR, they conceded a lot of goals, a lot of sloppy goals as well. The defence, you know, they were, if, you know, people will, will have looked at the stats, particularly on a Saturday ahead of having a bet and thought, well, oh, QPR are always good to concede a few goals. But it's it's turned, doesn't it? They now are quite hard to breach. Rob Dickey's come in, which obviously helps. But is he the sort of manager who is always taking stuff on board and thinking, well, we'll learn from, we'll learn from that heavy defeat. We'll have to defend better next time. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's a progressive manager, and I think he is. You know, he's he is focused on outcomes in in terms of when he makes it. You know, he he's, he he understands everything in terms of the decision that he ultimately comes to. But he's very, he very much honours the process, which is not necessarily natural for him. You know, um, and I think it's just kind of been a, a step by step thing. You know, it, it's 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 dealing with the weakest will link at any given moment in time and dealing with the the foremost biggest problem that, that's undermining you, get that dealt with step by in a in a step by step fashion. You know, it's very linear the progress that, that QPR have made. Um, so yeah, I just think that you know he's working with it's just understanding that you know you, you're not going to get everything on your own terms. And it's about staying level-headed, and it's about it's about keeping you know everything on an even keel, and just dealing with the, your single biggest problem at any particular moment in time. And that strategy-focused side of him as well is obviously probably quite good for dealing in the transfer window. I mean, I know he, he won't have one hundred percent say in everything that happens, but QPR do tend to get their players in early, and he clearly spotted that come January. They needed some fresh legs. They brought in several players, uh, you know, some who have had more of an effect than others, Stefan Johansson, Charlie Austin, uh, to name two of them. And that has really given them a new lease of life. And again, they, they did their business quite early in the window, didn't they? Yeah, and I think it's been important business because I think, you know, a couple of the players, that, there's plenty of experience there, certainly Charlie Austin, but also Jordi Device has got good championship experience. And, and Stefan Johansson, of course, from Fulham. Now, you talk about Austin and Johansson, and these are ageing older players and there's always been this little bit of a dynamic with QPR under Warburton that they've had a lot of young players for the most part. And it's the senior pros that have given the spine, you know, given them a bit of structure. And it's when they've got that more of a solid spine and a, and a, a bit of experience in the team that they do tend to kind of play off a solid base and get better results. Well, what we found this year is that, you know, because they've managed the resources very well, they've been able to bring in some senior pros who haven't played much football this season, but have got half a season in them. So, you know, you, would, you, you wouldn't necessarily think Charlie Austin and Stefan Johansson, now 46-game championship season, you know, at their stages of their careers, this schedule would, would be grueling. But for half a season, they've brought in, they've injected some. It's not too much for them at this stage because, they, they, you know, they're not like liable to be suffering burnout. And I, and I, and I think that Warburton's possibly identified this in part of, you know, when he gets to January and wants to do his business, he's kind of known in advance what he needs and that he's probably thought these things through with these particular players and what they bring. Um, so, yeah, and, it, and it, it also helps that he's very much on the same page as Les Ferdinand. I think they're very similar personality types, but Ferdinand is, is a, a proud executive, look, loves being in the executive boardroom role. And Warburton loves being on the training pitch. But I think they're very much of a similar mind and see the game in a very similar way. Very similar ideas about the way that QPR as a club have to be taken forward right now. And I guess if you're Charlie Austin as well, Mark Warburton is probably the ideal manager or the ideal type of manager because Mark, you know, a lot, a lot is made of Charlie Austin's injury problems. And you hear time and time again about 
Um, he's basically got nothing in his knee is is what this what keeps getting churned out. And I guess if you're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and you've got a logistics man like Warburton in the dugout, he's going to know when you need a rest and he's going to know when to give you 20 minutes at the end of a game, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Those kind of dynamics, he's, he's very good at managing. He's, you know, again, we go back to the trader mentality and understanding almost like minutes as commodities. And, you know, when, you know, he's, he's very much about the data. He's very, he's, he, he seems, he seems to reference it potentially more than most other managers in terms of, you know, uh, how many sprints players do, uh, how many kilometres they've run in games and, and, and those kinds of things. He, he understands the load on players. He, he repeatedly talks about the load. And you know that there's a lot of thought and that goes into the sports science side certainly this season more than ever. Um, so someone like Charlie Austin that needs to be managed in that way can absolutely rest assured that, you know, the answers that Mark Warburton lands on are probably going to be very shrewd answers about when when's too much, what, you know, what's, again, quantities, what's too much, what's not enough, and, you know, just, just how far to push and get the balance right. And I guess that also works for younger players as well. Forrest, he had a lot of younger players. And I think part of the problem was they kept making, you know, dreadful errors and, and such an experience you saw on a regular basis, but it was a team of younger players, but a team of younger players that he definitely improved over time. And again, there's plenty of younger players here at QPR. They've had to do a lot of their business by signing players such as Rob Dickey and Macaulay bomb, you know, using the leagues below them quite wisely. And I guess Warburton is, is, is a good man to have there as well as his team around him, to, to bring about improvement, isn't he? Yeah, well, his introduction into football from, you know, from being a trader was in development football. And, you know, so he, re- he understands that world very well and obviously understands. I think he's very, I think he's very tuned into the mindset of players as well. I think he, you know, he, he's able to empath- empathise with players and know when mentally themselves they're in a good place or they might be particularly struggling with demands. Uh, and especially when you you know you're interacting with those players day in day out, and um, so you know I think this side of thing you know in terms of bringing through young players again he he won't push too hard he understands when the when the load and when the demands on a younger player are too much, um, but he, you know he's clearly not afraid to give you for you for chance. Loads of players have, have been given an opportunity at QPR to try and you know prove themselves. Have been able to cut the teeth at Championship level. And then he kind of knows which ones, OK, you know, League One and League Two level loan signings have gone out this season and things like that. And he's known kind of, you know, which players are ready, which ones probably need half a season somewhere and, and maybe bring them back. And and all those little decisions, I think he, he I just think he he's a natural, you know, landing on very shrewd decisions in in, in those, you know, again, commodities and quantities and, and understanding how much and, and, and you know, when's the right time and things like that. He, I just think he gets so many of those little things that go underappreciated. I think he gets them bang on. And this is a question we asked last week and the week before. We asked it about Michael Appleton particularly, but is this Mark Warburton's level then? Obviously, he's managed in the Scottish Premiership. He's managed at Forest as well, at Brentford in this division. Um, but he is... Very well suited to QPR, as you mentioned, for the, the reasons, the myriad of reasons that we discussed. But is this the ceiling for Mark Warburton, or do you th- can you imagine him ever managing at a higher level? Um, it's a tough one because I think I think he, he can be a valuable asset to almost any club at almost any level. But whether that's as a manager, you know, the, these are the, uh, the. I mean, we go back to his time at Brentford, for example. Um, the problem potentially at Brentford was that Brentford had their own model that they wanted to create. And, 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 but Warburton's a strategist himself and he understands the strategy of a club and he wanted, he wanted control. He wanted more control than Brentford were ever willing to give him. And, you know, I think at QPR seems to be a good fit because him and Ferdinand think the same way and he understands the job of what it is he's got to do. Um, so he, you know, he doesn't go off. He's, He's not necessarily got an ego in the sense that I'm this Premier League coach and I'm going to kind of sideline some of the things that need to be done for the sake of the club because I want to showcase this attribute or that that attribute. He just sticks to the plan of what a club needs. Um, in t- so by the same token, we don't get to see his full capabilities as a coach. I don't think he's necessarily of a Premier League level. 
to, to manage a team at Premier League level. But then you think about all the different types of roles within a football club. I could see Mark Warburton working with a Premier League club, absolutely, because I think he's of that level in terms of, you know, we talk about football clubs as businesses and players as commodities. And I don't think there's many managers out there who understand all these different nuances so well as Warburton. But there are better coaches out there potentially in terms of, you know, Mark Warburton knows how to set up a football team, knows how to get results. No, you know, he knows all that side of it. But when we're talking about has he got an edge on other managers in the championship? Is he is he X amount better than other managers at the level? You know, we don't I mean it's it's harsh to judge because we are talking about a club that belongs in the bottom half of the championship. So, you know, how far can you go with that assessment? But I at the moment, I don't necessarily see him as uh, as a coach at, at Premier League level at this moment, no. And is there anything that he really is missing then? So we often hear about managers who can, I guess, self-identify and say, right, I don't have that in my locker, so I'm going to surround myself with assistants and, and coaches who can bring that to the club and to the players. Does Mark Warburton have that? Is there anyone around him who, who has a skill set that, that perhaps he doesn't or he hasn't yet developed or, or will never have absolutely i think i think almost any manager can get to premier league level by having the right backroom team around them absolutely and you know it, it, it's you know you could get someone that brings in you know what covers your blind spots and and maybe compensates for some of your weaknesses every manager's got strengths and weaknesses and has got blind spots as well so i mean i think you could say that for any manager and i think potentially warburton might be the sort of manager that understands that better than most and would, you know, he's one of his biggest assets is being able to see, you know, we're talking again about players as resources. He can spot a particular skill in somebody. You know, if you need a particular, a particular person for a particular job, he would potentially see that in somebody that other people don't recognize, you know, getting players to do jobs, that they've perhaps never done before, but they've got the required attributes to fulfil that role. Uh, you know, seeing the skill sets within plays, almost in a scouting sense, I think that's one of his skill sets. So I guess the same thing could apply to his own backroom team. That obviously it's, it's hard when you're going through games thick and fast to know what your own weaknesses are. You know, it's so incessant, the, the, the nature of football management. So that level of self-analysis and knowing what you lack yourself is a lot harder question sometimes than knowing what the team lacks or, you know, so I, I think, I just think, I think Warburton is a very intelligent, shrewd guy who, who certainly could have a role at Premier League level. I just don't see him in the dugout in the job that he's doing now with QPR. I think he, for certain he'd have to get QPR or a club like QPR into the Premier League first to even be given the chance, I would imagine. And would you see a director of football role then? We've seen other managers, uh, particularly older managers, go into that kind of position. And, you know, they do a lot behind the scenes, which goes unnoticed. And I guess if you've got Warburton sat in the stands rather than watching it on a level, you know, from the dugout, I guess he could probably see a lot more, could he? Uh, this is not something I've actually thought about too much before this podcast, but I actually do believe that, yeah, I think Mark Warburton would, in years to come, be a brilliant director of football and what he's doing now as a manager, almost this body of work in management is leading towards a potential executive role in his older years, you know, uh, as time passes. Um, because then he can say he's got real hands-on experience of just what the pressures are that a manager goes through and, you know, the, what life is really like on the training ground. And I think, it, you know, he left City Trading in order to do this. This was a passion. This is something he really wanted to fulfil. I don't think he's just going to give it up, you know, easily to go to a boardroom job. But I think there comes a point in every manager's career where, you you know, or not every manager's career, but a lot of managers, you reach a point and sometimes potentially, the, the you know, the opportunities at boardroom level might begin to look more attractive. And it wouldn't surprise me if Warburton was one of those, you know, one of those characters, because I think he's got, he has got the skills required to be a, a, a real top sort of director of football or someone in that kind of role. Well, if you ever fancy swapping his tracksuit for a, a smarter number, then that's maybe the route that he can go down. And finally then, Mike, on Mark Warburton, um, we talk a lot about manager cycles. The general consensus is that, you know, three years, three to four years is, is, is a really good run. 
Mark Warburton's had a bit of time now at QPR. His feet are firmly under the table. He's clearly enjoying his time there and the players are enjoying working with him. But can you see this relationship lasting a lot longer? You know, this season, clearly, he's done a really good job to avoid relegation. Next season, what will be expected of him? And, and do you think he can, can achieve at QPR? Uh, I think a lot depends on the accounts, the club accounts and where the club sees itself. And, and is it, you know, because it's had all these FFP concerns in recent years, they've had to really drastically reduce the budget year on year in, in recent seasons. And Warburton has cleverly from season to season kind of gone about the job in a different way. You know, he's had, he, he's brought these assets through like uh, a very Eze and, 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 and getting a big deal move for him and bringing some money in that way and really showcasing that player's talent. And, you know, this season it's more about having a bigger squad and being able to rotate better and a horses for courses approach. And then having the, you know, the stamina later in the season to, to, to then really compete on more equal terms with teams. And he's doing it a different way each season. At some point, there's, there's going to be a, a need to step up and, and invest more and demand more for the money that you know that, that where you are in budget terms. Right now, I think I think QPR is just a really stable club that nobody ever saw them being maybe two or three years ago. And I think Warburton and, and Ferdinand have done a real big job in turning the club around to become this real model of stability at championship level. They're kind of a they're a model to so many clubs at that level of how to how to get past FFP troubles. There's a lot of clubs that have got themselves into danger and have had to cut the cloth accordingly. And QPR in the next couple of years will be the model for, you know, depending on ownership issues and changes of ownership. But, you know, your Derbys and Sheffield Wednesdays and all of these clubs that have had these issues will look to what QPR have done potentially and, and, and say, right, OK, that's our path back, you know, onto, onto a level playing field and, and potentially challenging again. I don't necessarily know how the picture looks for QPR in the next two or three years, though. But right now, I mean, you know, you, you don't want to bre break some, you know, fix some of that isn't broken. And, and the way that Ferdinand and Warburton have managed QPR for the past two seasons, certainly, has been exceptional. And I think they just need to keep going on this path. And they'll know when the time is, OK, is there a decision to make? But no, they're a, they're a good, solid championship club under this guidance at the moment. Yeah, club we mentioned earlier as well at the top of the uh, podcast, Birmingham. They could uh, they could learn a few lessons, I think, from uh, what's going on at uh, Loftus Road this season. Right uh, before we move on, Mike, if you want to use uh, Mark Warburton and everything we've learned about him today and all the other championship managers to aid your betting, uh, there is a free case study available. Yeah, I've been using manager profiling like this basically for you know since lockdown and um, since the since the action returned. And it's, it's been really profitable. It's been really good because, you know, it's, it's really difficult nowadays to, it, based on core team strength, to, to pick out winning bets and, and, and you know, to, to beat computer algorithms, basically. Data science has got team strength nailed now to a, a very accurate degree. So, you know, it, it helps to be able to see the game in new ways and kind of pick your battles when to be with certain teams, when to be against them, based on the manager's personality type and his leadership style. So I've just kind of put the basic principles into a case study, into a video that, you know, that, that people can watch. It's free to watch the video. So, yeah, just click on the link. 